What I want to do is kind of start with the very basics. Normally, when we talk about raster, you can open up a DGN and everything's ready to go, and we're going to just add some raster. The problem with that is it leaves out a lot of stuff. You may have played around with some of the raster yourself, and there are files that work perfectly. They end up exactly where they need to go. There's other ones that you catch using Raster Manager. And the first thing you do is kind of scratch your head and go, well, wait a minute, something isn't right. Maybe my units, maybe the geographic ported system, there's some issue. So what I'd like to do is take a step back and actually not start with Raster Manager, but I want to start with just plain old referencing because I'm going to add a few files. I'm going to talk about what we have. We'll make sure everything is really in the right location. We'll talk about units. We'll talk about the GCS. We won't spend a ton of time on it, but I want to get through some of the basics of it. And then we'll start adding some images to it. And I'll tell you that we got some mistakes already built into this so that they're not going to end up in the right place. I didn't think it was fair to show you guys a bunch of images that I already know are going to fall exactly where they should. What I wanted to do is have a few that are, you know, a little more typical of someone just grabbing a few images from a site that's out there. Maybe there's a state site that's out there and we pull down some images and we go, okay, great, let's attach these or their USGS quads or whatever they are, and they don't end up in the right location. These are problems you all run into. So I thought we could start with talking a little bit about that. So first off, you know, just so we get a lay of the land of the file that we have here, in this 2D file, a couple things. First, let's look at the units. You'll notice that the units are in survey feet and inches. Just have to note that. We don't have to make them match anything, but let's just know that that's what they are. We have a geographic coordinate system that is defined. The geographic coordinate system has a couple things that we probably should note. You know, this is Florida State Plain East. It's using a datum of NAT83. It has a projection uh, built into it. You know, what do we care about looking at this? Well, make sure that the area that we're working in, that it matches within the area that is defined within our geographic coordinate system. Some of you may have even experienced that with something simple as, you know, hey, I've got a file, I open the file up, I wanna add something like a Bing Maps as a background, and you realize that, geez, the area you're working in is nowhere near the geometry that's there. It could be in a lot of cases that the minimum and maximums for the geographic coordinate system just doesn't match the area that you're working in. So nothing to really note here other than, hey, this is also, you know, U.S. survey feet. Yeah, we're good. We can use this one. So that's the area that I want to work within. So what, first thing I'm going to do, look at the units, look at what the geographic coordinate system is that I'm trying to match. Now, let's just attach a few reference files. So I'm going to come in and go to my reference tools. And I've got one that I use a lot because it just real quickly has the state borders in it. And this is a USA master map. The only thing exciting about this to know about is that I'm going to attach this interactively is that within that file, it's the contiguous US. There's 48 different models that are all referenced together in a model called USA master map. What do you care about that? Each one of those uses a different geographic coordinate system. So rule number one, they don't need to match. So you don't need to match each one if I pick USA Master Map, it's going to reference Florida at a certain geographic coordinate system. The USA Master Map actually uses a metric geographic coordinate system, and it's sort of a mismatch of the rest. But if done correctly and selecting you reproject it, everything is going to end up exactly where we want it to go. So I'm going to start with just a couple things. First, you know, you guys, I'm going to make sure live nesting is set. And then let's talk about this. Y'all see this option for display raster references. If any of you have ever attached a DGN file and then afterwards kind of scratched your head and wondered, why did I also get a raster image? Or you know, why do I have that as a background? It could be that this is causing part of that problem. And that is, in this case, I want to turn that off because I actually do have some raster attached to that. And I don't want it to be in my uh, DGN file here. I don't want it to be visible. So I'll make sure that's turned off. Well, nothing exciting is gonna happen, but you'll notice that what happens is on the status bar, it's going ahead, it's taking into account that each one of those is at a different geographic coordinate system. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see the contiguous US. And of course, what I care about is the state of Florida, right? 
I also want you to note, because we're going to talk about some preferences in a little bit, when I drag my cursor over the top of it, it selects it. Now, that may be fine for some folks, but personally, that drives me crazy. I'd rather be able to click on the edge of it. That also impacts raster, so that's the reason I bring it up. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. I want to add one more thing to this, just one more. In fact, let's go to my references, and let's attach something else. I've got some county boundaries. I'm working in Florida, so I'm going to go in here to my county boundaries. And I'm going to pick something else to attach. So here, I'm going to pick shapefile. Y'all are probably familiar with shapefiles as well. Why is this important for me to show this to you? Well, one thing is that all of these use different geographic coordinate systems, but yet they end up perfectly aligned on top of one another. Everything is exactly what it should be. We've told it that it's you know, reprojected. Everything works out exactly the way that I want it. In fact, at this point, I'm just going to shut off that master map. And I happen to know that I'm going to be working in this county in Florida. Let's just zoom in real close and let's just verify it real quick. Let's make sure there's no smoke and mirrors, that everything's going to attach where it should. If I come in here to my background, and again, this is Bing Maps, folks. This is sort of raster. It's added as a background. It's not really designed to be something you would print. It's more along the lines of, if I said something like just street map, and was to just wait a moment and let this uh, attach, you can see this is exactly where I want to be. It's the Fort Lauderdale area that I'll be working in. Actually, it's plantation, this area right out in here. But you get the idea is that it overlays exactly where it should. I wouldn't use this as a background. I wouldn't try to clip it because I can anyway. This is more just a quick check. In fact, I'll just uh, turn that back off. This is the area that we're going to worry about. Let's turn on some levels so you can actually see something here. I'm just going to quickly turn them all on, but I've got a couple images that I'm going to shut off after the fact here. So let me just turn off these borders. So this is the area of the project that I actually care about. I could bore you with putting back on the big maps, but I think you believe me that this is actually where it should go. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.